One of the best categories of supplements for muscle building, fat burning, and just overall fitness are adaptogens. Now, yes, it's true. The best supplements are the ones that tend to fill nutrient needs. If you're lacking a vitamin or mineral, taking one of those things can be a game changer. If your protein is low, protein powder can be a game changer. But besides those, look at adaptogens. They actually improve or enhance your body's ability to adapt. What is adapting? Muscle building, fat loss, getting stronger, getting more fit, improving endurance. So many of you will notice positive effects by supplementing with the proper and appropriate adaptogens. It's a great category of supplements. They've been used for thousands of years and other forms of medicine. They've got health benefits. Check them out. Yeah, but at what point have they become popular in the West? Because I know that they're probably more, you know, uh, Eastern related in terms of like herbs and all that. Yeah. Like we, we, they've been here, but they haven't been real like popular marketed at least. Right? Yeah, well, kind of like they'll market them differently. I know. We, do we have a lot of research around like building muscle and stuff with them? We do now. Oh, we do. Yeah, we're starting to now. Like, uh, like ashwagandha is a classic adaptogen uh, used in Ayurvedic medicine. And the way, so here's what's cool about these old forms of medicine, right? They've been around for hundreds or thousands of years. They don't have scientific studies because the scientific method wasn't used uh, back then or for those methods, but they had lots and lots of anecdotes. So you go to Ayurvedic medicine, what does yeah. ashwagandha do? Oh, it's good for libido, energy, strength, right? What do they find in studies? It makes you stronger. It improves libido. It gives you more energy. Rhodiola, been used for a long time. The, the, the Soviets actually studied it, but the problem with the Soviet studies were a lot of them didn't come over here because of the Iron Curtain. Well, okay, what did they use rhodiola for? They used it for their soldiers to give them more energy, better mental sharpness, better resistance to things like fatigue, improve their strength, athletic performance, muscle. What do studies show now? Yeah. It definitely does those things. Ginseng. Ginseng in Chinese medicine has shown lots of these different things. What do studies show? Ginseng actually does these things. So adaptogens are a great category of supplements primarily because they've been around and been used for so long. Um, and yes, now we have studies actually support their use. So why is this important for the average person? Every time you're trying to get your body to change, what you're essentially doing is asking your body to adapt. So if you can enhance the adaptation process by taking an adaptogen – literally adaptogen, right? Improve your body's ability to deal with stress. What does that mean? Your body adapts to the stress better. What is the stress? Exercise, lifting weights, dieting. That's a stress on the body, right? Lack of sleep. That's a stress on the body. You'll actually become more resilient and you'll adapt to things better by using a properly using, I should say, adaptogen. So it's so, a great category. So let's, let's play a little game here. You have a, a person, an avatar who is trying to build muscle they're uh, deficient on vitamin D, um, creatine, uh, ashwagandha, vitamin D supplement. If I were to compare them all head to head in the pursuit of building muscle, how would you like show them on like a, like a, like on a graph? To they're show deficient like, in vitamin D? Yeah, I'm deficient in vitamin D. So vitamin D would be first. Then. So that would be. Yeah, because that's an so essential So it's still nutrient. even more than creatine. Yeah, because really, well, lack of vitamin D just won't affect your ability to build. I muscle. know that's why I use It'll vitamin D. Everything. Yeah, it's hormone, hormone related. Hormones, right? yeah. you're, you're, you can make you depressed. You're getting anxious, like you're sick, right? So, if you lack an essential, essential meaning you need this to thrive and survive. If you're lacking that, um, you're sick. You're essentially sick. You, your body and your mind are all not going to be well. So that's always number one. Creatine. For building muscle, um, for muscle health, at you know that kind of stuff, strength, um, bone, or even showing now it's great for for bone mineral, um, or for improving bone density, I should say, or strength, or reducing the risk of of fractures. Um, you know, and it, it's got thousands of studies on on it. And creatine, by the way, is naturally occurring. Creatine is, is up there; it's at the top. But adaptogens are right there, like they so, I mean, so let's okay back to my thing because I really I'm gonna make you do this. Is sure, like you know, you've already said vitamin D for sure, and then where would where like give me like a visual like here's vitamin D. Creatine as, would be next, and then creatine. And, and is it creatine like this, or is creatine like real close to that? You think? No, I mean you 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 fill a nutrient uh, gap or deficiency, it's life changing. Like. You'll take somebody who's on antidepressants or you know anti-anxiety medication because they have a nutrient deficiency they don't know, and then they they all of a sudden feel that nutrient deficiency. It's life changing, complete life changing, right? So so that's like big. That's okay. big deal. So creatine in the category of a vegan would be like pretty elevated. Vegans get a much bigger effect from creatine because yeah. they don't get they don't get ton, they don't get much of it all. In fact, they show uh, statistically significant boosts in IQ 
with vegans who take creatine. That's right. how big of a difference it makes. Uh, okay, so vitamin D here, and then does that mean you're going to say like uh, creatine and uh, and ashwagandha are or adaptogens? Yeah, I would say uh, if this was a scale of one to ten, yeah, filling a nutrient need would be a ten. Okay, creatine would be like a five. Okay, and adaptogens would be like uh, probably like a four or three. Okay, now for people listening, oh, that's a four or three. That's nothing. Every other supplement's at zero. So, so I mean, almost every supplement you're going to take, right, right, except for the ones that fill neat nutrient needs, are pretty much at zero. Anything that says it's going to build muscle, burn body fat. That isn't in the categories of things that I talked about. Um, you're, it's not going to do anything for you. Right. There's nothing so, that does anything. So you got all the big boxes kind of checked off, and like you're doing everything in terms of like nutritionally and training wise, but also you're you're carrying on a lot of excess stress, like it, whether it's relationships or work related, whatever it is, and you're just kind of spinning a little bit faster. Like this is a category you Listen, want to look into. Uh, it, it, this is not. Well, that's another great angle you're going right there because that now makes that leap up, right? It does. So if you have somebody who's got a, like a, a high stress job, like you're right. saying. And it's like, and now I take that same person, right? And, but let's say they're not deficient in vitamin D or whatever, and then they're, but they have a high stress type of job. Yeah, there's they're over, there's overwhelmed. Their body's overwhelmed by stress, and yeah. so now mm -hmm. adaptogens. Are now I've ad adapted and probably leap from really yes, that, I, I yes because the need is there, right? But I mean, I can't stress this enough. One of the biggest challenges that people encounter whenever they're trying to change their body is appropriately applying stress. What I say appropriately, it's got to be the right amount of stress that's going to induce adaptation, but not overcome your body's ability to adapt and just have to focus on healing. It's where people get stuck. Well, imagine if your stress meter limit is here. Now an adaptogen moves it up here. So now your normal stresses don't overwhelm your body. So for some people, this is significant. And this is why you see these adaptogens doing things like raising testosterone. Do they directly raise testosterone? No. What they probably do is prevent the depression of testosterone mm, Yeah, because you're overwhelmed by stress, right? So I think the last time we had a commercial for Organifi, I think I even brought this up, but this is, I speculate that this is the main reason why the green juice gets so much positive feedback because there's a lot of, there's a lot of people, especially in the fitness space that shit on green juice. It's like, oh, it's like a total waste of money. It's yeah. like, whatever. It's just vegetable. Go get your vegetables, eat them yeah. in real life, which we always would advocate somebody That's eating. like saying protein powder is a waste of money. Go eat a steak. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Whole foods are- Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Right. So we always push that. But I think when people talk about how they can feel a difference from mm -hmm. it, I, I would probably speculate that it's because of the ashwagandha. It's got it. ashwagandha in it. And then their red juice has got rhodiola, which is another, Adapt again, that's a, that's a very popular Russian adaptogen. A little bit more stimulating. So here's what's interesting about adaptogens. They're not all the same. Some are more calming. Some are more stimulating. So rhodiola is more stimulating. It's the only one I don't like. And now here's a funny thing. Uh, so I don't know how to explain this in Western medicine terms. I had a herbalist explain this to me and they said that I was very high in yang, yang energy. So you know, yin and yang, yin, yin, yin female, yang male, yin, you know, yang, yang, yang fire, yeah. yin, you know, cool, whatever. Right. They said my yang was high, tended to be high, which made sense. That's my personality. So taking too much rhodiola or even red ginseng, panax ginseng, the original ginseng, mm -hmm can drive it so high that it makes me feel feverish and kind of depressed. So I have to take a small dose and I feel good. If I take too much, I don't feel good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Aren't they about like heat and cold? That's like, how they explain it. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what's happening on a you know neurochemical or biological level. I should definitely look into That's that. interesting because those are the two that I, I think I like the least of all yeah. the adaptogens that are out there. You, you would I know do well sure. with ashwagandha like me. That's no, the I, green juice. It does. Yeah. 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 I mean, you had me for a while back when we were really trying to work on my testosterone. Yeah. I was taking the pure ashwagandha, which I would oh, much rather liquid. I, yeah, I'd much rather have it in the green juice. You know what the you know what ashwagandha means? I think it means horse piss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Really? Yeah, look it up, Doug. Does look up ashwagandha means horse piss? Just put that because it smells. <laughs> wow. If you if you get the actual like herb itself. It, it is not. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, dude, it's terrible. It's awful, I mean, that dude. the liquid form you had me taking way back when. Yeah. By the way, I could have given you capsules, but I wanted to see you take the liquid. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> like, you're take yeah. Shit. So to put it in more uh, polite terms, odor of the horse. <laughs> As <laughs> its roots horse. smell like horse's urine. This yeah. comes from wow. Ayurvedic It uh, tastes medicine. like it, too. Oh, wow. Wait, hold on. 
It tastes like horse piss? <laughs> yeah, it tastes so like it tastes yeah. from, from, okay. from experience. Okay. Wait a minute. I don't know. You worked in farms and shit. I know, right? <laughs> Not a lot of girls. What else were you milking out there? there? <laughs> I'm sure some splashed up on me once. Oh. Oh. You get curious. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that What's curious. going on here? <laughs> oh, I don't like that. No. Um, uh, Ashra, so so you, got, you want to look at which one works best for you. So, you know, this doesn't necessarily mean every one of these is going to be great. Definitely don't combine a bunch. I know people listening right now like me, we'll take all of them and take them at the same time. Yeah, That's not how adaptogens work. The right dose works best. The, too much or too little doesn't do anything for you. It can actually make you feel worse, right? And the dose can be different from person to person. Like the red juice has rhodiola. I can do one dose a day and I feel great. If I go up to two to three, I start to feel those feverish kind of symptoms. Now, I know people who take the red juice several times a day and love it. They feel amazing. I, I can take multiple of okay. the red juice. Yeah, I go but- one to two and that's it. So that has the red juice has the rhodiola in it. It does. So that's weird. Yeah. Now when I had remember when we were we were working with Fit Aid and they had that Fit Aid that had rhodiola in it. I mean, it would just it would make me feel nauseous. Oh, that like, might have been something else. Well, there were, I know it had other stuff in it. So yeah. maybe it was the um because I've taken pure can. rhodiola in high doses. So I read these old Soviet studies and they're like super high dose. So of course that's what I did. I didn't feel good. But the red juice has got a nice. Nice even dose. I, I can have three of the red juice in a day, okay. no problem, I'm and one to two. and I love it. But then I've had others. I've not only and Fit Aid's the first one that comes to mind, but we've had other companies send us stuff, and almost every time when I tell you like it, you're like it has the rhodiola. Yeah. In it. you've always been like you you don't do good on it. Yeah, yeah, but the red juice, not that case. Yeah, ginseng. Could I'm, it be something else that is in the red juice that's kind of countering that? That's making me feel better. That's a good question. Uh, let me think about that for a second. It may be, uh, you know, Organifi does a good job of balancing out their knowledge about herbs and, and uh, compounds and how they should be combined is really good. Most supplement companies have zero knowledge about this. All they know is stimulant, 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 combine them all. That's going to be better. Or relaxing, 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 relaxing. Well, or all, they're, what they're really good at is what is, is the marketing part, like what, yeah. where most money goes into. Oh, I'm talking about the ones that actually put stuff in. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones are just, but yeah. I know this, I've seen stuff like I've seen sleep products. And I'm like, holy shit, you put five different herbs that depress the CNS. Right. You're going to wake up feeling like you're it's like something's groggy, wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. You know, Organifi does a good job of balancing things out because that's what you're supposed to do. If you go to an actual herbalist, they don't see, here's the problem. People approach herbs the way Western medicine approaches medicine. We take an active compound. We concentrate the shit out of it and yes. throw it at you. Herbs don't work best this way. You balance them out. That's how you get the best effects. Herbalist, that's exactly what they do. They'll never give you one strong dose of this. They'll give you this, and, and then they'll give you something yeah. else based off of your symptoms and how they work together. You know, I never asked you when you when you worked with Organifi to to do a peak and make that. Did you did you learn anything from them? Did you feel like because I know you worked with them as far as like the formula? So I knew that I wanted balance. I knew some of the compounds that I wanted. What I learned was how uh, some of the natural sources of those compounds and what they put them in, with how they put them in there. Um, and yeah, they're they're they were. I mean, I love when I talk with people who you know know more than I do about a subject that I feel like I know quite a bit about. So I was I was impressed. Uh, okay. I was definitely impressed. Okay. With, yeah, with that stuff. So That's cool. But yeah, adaptogens, dude. Um, I, you know, I it, most people will take them. And they'll notice uh, performance enhancing effects. And if you find the right one for your body, like ashwagandha for me is, I mean, I, it's distinct. I'll go up. This doesn't sound like a lot to someone, but it is to me who's been working out for so long. I'll add 10 to 15 pounds on my compound lifts. It's hundred percent. I've already parsed it out to ashwagandha supplementation wow. after about, it's usually after about 30 to 45 days. That's a significant amount. That's literally just the supplement. Nothing else. But so. I think what the, the point that matters most though is that it's because you need it or it's something that really- It like, just balances out the stress, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the hardest thing to do is juggling what's the right amount of and exercise intensity. Cadet, so that's and, probably good for you. Say what? You're a stress cadet. So that's probably good. That's probably good for you. Like okay, let's keep, playing this, let's keep playing this game. I want to take it further because I actually have another question that's related to kind of this stuff. So we have the, the, the vitamin D thing. I said, now let's throw in peptides. Oh- well, that's a whole nother category. I know it is. That's why. I, so is this like. Whole peptides are strong. Peptides are strong. Which explains why they're expensive. Yeah. Like right. you take a peptide, it does shit. Like, and, and you're going to notice for sure. Oh, BPC. You've been taking it too. Yes. Okay. So, so you're that's taking it differently my, than me. That's why it's on my mind right now. You're taking it differently than me. I'm doing the oral BPC yeah, KPV. I'm, I'm shooting it. And where are you putting it? In my thigh. Where and you it, have the injury? Yeah. It doesn't feel like it exists anymore. How it's, fast? Bro, it's only been. Well, it's actually been about seven injections now 
Because you were like, seven. it was like a pain yeah, in the ass. Yeah, it, here's the deal. It works so good, it scares me. To go I, test yes, it out? Because I'm like, I don't even feel it anymore. And I'm like, I want to get after it, but I'm afraid. Wow. Yeah, I know. That's how it was with my Achilles, too. Same thing. I it, remember you saying that. It was like, in, it, in, like the next day or after like the second shot, I already felt significant reduction in the pain. To the, and then it got to the point where it was like, oh my God, it feels yeah. like I didn't do anything. And then I'm like, but then I'm like scared. I'm like, is it just is it just blocking no, a not. signal or is it numbing something? And no, then I'm like, it's not. So is this stimulating like stem cell production and localizing it in it, the area? Or? It literally accelerates. It, they call it the Wolverine peptide because it excel, dramatically accelerates wound healing or injury healing. Right. So they'll do these like crazy studies on on rats. Well, they'll sever an Achilles or do something crazy, and then have these guys over here just heal on their own. You have these ones over here use BPC, and it's like <laughs> twice as fast. Yeah, it's wild. Well, that's how. Okay, so this is not my first time kind of injuring my leg where it's at. This I've, this has happened like a good four or five times. It's a similar spot and area that where this this happens. Are you doing like a deep like deep into the muscle injection or like a insulin needle? It's an insulin needle. Oh, okay, but I go straight into the. Right, I mean, right. yeah, because it's I, on the surface. The quality, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, um, but so so I kind of know like about how long I have to take it easy and rehab before I can kind of get after it and and so that's exactly what I, I know it's just significantly faster, so much faster that I'm like. So my I buddy Eric has had this chronic shoulder shit he's been dealing with forever. Physical therapy, correctional exercise. I sent him to some people we know. It got better, but it's always kind of like been there for a little while. And he's had this guy's had so many injuries. He played football and just a wild childhood. Anyway, he's like, dude, he goes, I, I did a couple like into the, the joint where it hurts. And he said the same thing. He goes, is this like, am I just like numbing it? Like what's going on? Because yeah. I feel so much better. I'm like, no, you're healing. You're healing so much fast. Yeah. So I'm doing the oral capsule and the capsule, do, uh, it, it accelerates healing in the gut. So it's like time release to release into the gut? Well, just because it's literally wherever you put it is where it works most. So and there's a little bit of a systemic effect if you take it orally. I've been reading, but it's mo mainly in the gut. Speeds up the healing of the mucosa lining and any damage that has uh, you know that you have in your gut. Can I tell? Yeah, you know yeah. how I can tell. I can eat things that I normally can't eat. Now wow. this might not be a good thing because <laughs> I, I might push it too hard. I just yeah, I just put an order in to get some uh, oral as well. Just oh, you haven't started yours yet. I haven't started it yet. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious your guys' feedback. I better I want to say this because everyone's excited watching this right now. Um, yes, you can buy all the stuff online. No, they are not made by a pharmacy. They're all research chemicals. Is a great area, and I've seen third party testing on some of the stuff. Doctor Seeds actually showed me this. And uh, you are gambling if you do that. You'll, you'll have a weird peptide in there that you don't even know what well, it is or nothing. If you're not working with remember when we talked about- You got to go with the pharmacy. And you got to know this case, just as a consumer, understand this. Like What I brought up the other day when we were talking about CBD is just like, it's one of those markets because it's not regulated like that, that and, there's, and they're expensive, there's huge margins. And when there's huge margins in a market like that, and, I, and especially when it's new- so many charlatans are going to get in there and 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 you know water down things to increase their margins. You know and what so, the game is? Yeah. This, people don't know this. Here's the game. Supplement companies used to do this, and some of them still do. You'll put out a product that's super popular, have none of that product in there. You have huge margins. By the time you start getting bad reviews, You're close right, shop. Next thing. Start it again. Next yeah. thing. And yep. do another one. Because it's so easy to set up an online storefront on, uh, uh, you know, on the internet. It's so easy. Didn't to do we that. look? Isn't that what? So you don't have to change anything else. Just the business. Did you ever just, find Doug for me? Uh, yeah. Who the founder of Rise Supplements? R Y S E. Um, because they, they have Those shit. Knockoff of uh, shreds. shreds. Yes, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the, it was the same, same group people. of guys. And they did a shut that down and open. And it after up. shreds went down, they opened the new brand Rise. <laughs> And imagine also, that's the way to, to get rid of the inventory, right? That's like, Nicholas Stella. I don't know if that's the same guy or not. Right, see if it's, put rise, put um, sh is shreds the uh, rise? Because all you got to do is like uh, change the labeling, and yeah. then you, you know there's the a, same there's, product. There's a clue in it, right? They both words misspelled like dorks to make it look cool. <laughs> shreds <Yes>. rise. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, uh, the Z's on everything. We work with people who you see are that? doctors, and you go to a pharmacy. It's uh, mphormones.com. So if you're interested in peptides, mphormones.com. It's an actual, actual Do doctor's, actual pharmacy. Today's program giveaway is the Shredded Summer Bundle. This includes MAPS programs that are great for getting you shredded. Here's how you can win 
Leave a comment below uh, and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. By the way, this has to happen within the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Oh, one more thing. Check out Mind Pump Clips channel. Short clips of their favorite parts of the episode. Fitness facts, fun times, good stuff. It's Mind Pump Clips. Also, we're running a sale right now on some MAPS workout programs. Check this out. MAPS Cardio, 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle you just heard me give away. That is also 50% off. And then finally, the Bikini Bundle, which is also a bundle of MAPS programs, is also 50% off. So all of those are 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Do you foresee, because it's not a cheap space, do mm -hmm. you foresee <coughs> it getting cheaper in, in, in the future, or do you think that it's going to stay really well, expensive? Unfortunately. Because the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> so Shreds was Alvin Lal. Yeah, I know that's the main guy. Uh, yeah. there's a, there was a bunch of them all connected to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. All you do is you do like, we start another podcast and, and then we just, you know, we'll put like Andrew as the yeah. name. Pump Mind. Yeah. It's the same company. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a different company. No, yeah. So yeah. So company. I don't know if that's the way to look at it. I mean, you're probably just directly asking the internet, like, is, you know, is there any affiliation with Rise Supplements to Shreds Supplements? Yeah, something like that. I felt it's like it was. Well, I remember, I remember it was right after it went under and then like literally a month or two later, you had Joey Swole and some of those guys that were, were he promoting. now is a great guy. Apparently he always, he does makes videos about <laughs> so, how great he is on <laughs> people uh, send me DMs. Like, <laughs> look you know, at this guy talking great things. Oh, about wow. It. Save all the people from getting bullied in the gym. Yeah, we, you know what though? Such a we pandemic. should give people second chances. I feel like such a dick. Maybe he is. Maybe he is a nice guy now. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe not. Yeah. I don't know why, why are you so quiet over there? Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you could be a nice guy and you still be. Uh, I mean, you could be a nice, yeah, you could be yeah, a nice yeah. guy, and you can nice still rifter. be a virtue signaling turd too at the yeah. same time. You know what I'm saying? You can, <laughs> right? Doesn't mean you, doesn't, doesn't mean you're not nice. You can be nice and be all those things still. Oh so. man, yeah. I Why, it, what it is is like everybody, in, and I know there's going to be somebody that gets all offended by that because they're like, oh, he's so sweet and nice. Everything he does now, it's like you these these kids on Instagram and social media they they do something they see that it works as and far that as becomes try, their thing. that becomes yeah. their thing and it's just like that's my stick now as I yeah. I do this not be, not because I really care yeah. that much yeah. but because it gets me lots of traction and comments and and then and people believe Dude, I care so. I, I want to talk about okay, should be so. a trajectory of like otherwise you know how I feel like people do the, like do those things and you just do it in silence like if oh, you yeah. like, it's, exactly. like people, it's like people who donate some of that exactly. and you have to make a big ordeal about it. It's like, that's old exactly. marketing one one by the way, is yeah. you, you, you donate a hundred thousand dollars and then you spend $200,000 yeah. advertised that you donate. If you're videoing $100, you being charitable, dude, like, come on. Yeah. You know why you're doing it. That's yes. what that's like yeah. to me. It's like, are, so are you really going and like actually changing cultures in gym or do you just video over somebody else's video talking about somebody and yeah. being like, you know, you're and you're talking to all people who agree with you already, so you're not really changing that culture. You know, I wanted to go back real quick. You know quick. what I'm saying? The guy, the guy who you were making fun yes. of, who bullies people in the gym, are not following you. No. So, and you're talking to your audience who is the bullied one, so they all agree yeah. and they cheer you on. But are you really going in the gym and actually doing stuff about it, or know. no? Probably you're not. Awareness probably and not. Probably so. not. Probably all right, not. I want to go back to the peptides real quick. You asked about what I think about it being cheaper. Here's unfortunately what I think. I unfortunately think there's going up? to be a regular. I think they're going to get heavily yeah, regulated wow. at some yeah. point. That's what I think. I think because like, especially with the like anything that works. it's going to yeah exactly it works and it's going to be competitive yeah. with the pharmaceuticals. Didn't they try and do that with creatine at one point? Yeah, right. They were going to regulate it with creatine. They're trying. They're trying to regulate the whole supplement industry, which I blame supplement companies for the stupid stuff that they do. But yeah. whatever. You know, talking about influencers who do weird stuff to get. What do you got, Doug? What'd you say, Doug? Well, it looks like he worked for Shreds for a while, and then at some point there was a lawsuit of uh, I think Shreds sued him. But I don't know all the details of it yet. Oh, okay. yeah. oh interesting. Oh, but so there was a relationship it. there, but yeah. I don't know exactly what it oh, was. Okay. But it doesn't yeah. sound like it ended well. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of influencers, a uh, guy that we knew for a second, Connor Murphy. Have you guys seen his uh, his stuff on Face Palm? What? I'm is not, he? I don't bro. stick up with him or stay up with him uh, anymore. Bro, he's gone. He's got, he gets weirder. I mean, it's an example of what I just said. Example of what I just said. Like literally, you 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 throw spaghetti on the wall, something sticks, and it's like, oh wow, when I do these weird, what he what it was his yoga troll thing that he did, where he was like, uh, he'd sit with them and then like, I don't yeah, know, we're orgasming, do but we're just doing yoga together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so they face. do something, uh -huh. and it's like, oh shit, look at all the comments it's getting, look at all the, the yeah. traction. It's like now this is my thing, you know. Uh, and then you ride that. Until people are like, okay, played out, seen it enough, yeah. and then you do something else. Like. He does weird shit. All right, so I got some crazy hacks for you that I found on the internet that are really, there was this, this site, and it literally was like, 
it was titled something like Crazy Hacks. And I, I read some of them and I'm like, oh, are they real? So I'm going to start with the first one that's kind of cool. And I checked up on it and I think, and it works. People are saying this works. Okay. Okay. All right. You know how when you're driving and you go in that lane that you're not supposed to because you don't have the pass or whatever, and then yeah. you're going to get a ticket in the mail and it's a picture of your, of your license plate. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, you owe 20 bucks or whatever. You could put clear skateboard grip tape over the license plate, and which you could still see it. You could still see it from behind. But it, it but it distorts. From above, it starts the it digital. It looks thing. like it's 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 a blurred <laughs> image, and it and it works. What a great hack! It's wow. a, it works. They can't get your license plate. Oh wow, we're gonna get, we're gonna get trouble for sharing that one. Hey, I it was on the internet. That. I get hit with that all the time uh, too. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Here's oh, here's yeah. another one. This one's kind of dickish, and then there's a funny one. Here's the dickish one. If you want free parking, find a garage that oh, makes you this. take a ticket. Oh. To keep track of how long you've been there. When you leave, instead of giving the machine the original ticket, you go get a new one and then give that to the machine, and then you'll only be charged for like five minutes or free. Well, yeah, it's sounds obvious. Yeah, it's obvious. One. Yeah, so what you do is the, you, 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 when you have to go in, you have to get the original one. Yeah. So then you put that on your dash, then you go park for four hours. Then when you leave the you section, just walk through. And yeah, this is helping for the Warriors yeah. game when we do that stuff. That, that's a good one right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, bro, that's costing me like 60, 70 bucks sometimes oh, just really? for a, a Warrior game. Wow. Yeah, I know those parts. What if they, they have cameras? They, they do. Put have the skateboard tape. They on your do face. have cameras, but I doubt they're monitoring <laughs> it that tape much. All over me. Yeah. I just walk around with skateboard tape. Ah, What's kind of crazy is why did I not think of that? That's kind of a very obvious one. I don't know. That's such Are a, you embarrassed that you didn't think of that? I am a little embarrassed that I didn't think I of that. I feel like you're the guy that would do that. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really bad. You're going to drive backwards in, you know, in the inn. <laughs> if you drive backwards, yeah. Yeah. that's not a good idea. If you drive backwards, they give you money. <laughs> that is <not> a good <laughs> yeah, exactly. You break the machine. We owe you money. Yeah. All right, here's another one. This one's hilarious. This one made me laugh so hard. If your girlfriend or wife or whatever, has an annoying friend that you want her to just stop hanging out with, this is what you do. You just ch casually mention to your wife that you think her friend's pretty. Like she's hot. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have She'll one never to, bring I have one, I have one to add. So, the other, so uh, all of those bullshit today. fake parking spots at, at retail stores, in garages, and also what's included in that oh, like is green parking. Ele uh, electric vehicles. Yes. <laughs> It is not illegal for or, anyone to park in there. There's no yeah, laws. Yeah. There is no laws that or say- Or the you, online shopping, like all designated of them. spots. All of them. Like, online shopping. The, um, the only one I won't do Expecting is, mothers? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. I was just going to say- Burrito loading that. zone, and, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking loading. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, hey, well, I tell, tell me I'm not. They might tell, tell you for me that I'm one. Not. I'm not sure about that I one. I got to tell you a story, dude. Yeah. What, we did that once, because Adam actually does this. We, I don't remember where we were. And we, we this Whole back Foods. When, this wow. back when you drove your, uh, what was your big- Big uh, Denali. It was a big yeah. Denali. So yeah. this thing's like, let me see. Yeah. Just a gas guzzler. <laughs> he parks an electric vehicle only. <laughs> And I, he pulls out, and I'm like, "We like this is like we only worked together for like a year." Yeah. I'm like, "I don't think you can." There's like Adam. nowhere to put this. Yeah, I'm like, "There's nobody, Adam. I don't think you can park here." Adam takes out the, the electric charger. pump and puts it in his window. <laughs> he puts it inside. And his we walk away. Car, and we just go inside. You know, some fucking snooty Prius chick would walk right by me afterwards. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're killing the environment. Yeah, I, I know. I can't yeah, believe yeah, that you did that. Like you guys get your own parking spots because you're. Betting. I got a clarification on that. Sorry, guys. What? But basically, you 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 can either get fined or towed if the spot has the plug-in charger and you take the spot. Oh, if it so that have is plug-in charger. Fine. Spoken like a Tesla owner. So, <laughs> oh, that's right. He's over like this. He's like, bullshit. This is bullshit. Like, There's no out. way. <laughs> yeah, I just want to save all the people out there that are going to choose to park in that spot. So if it has a charging fine. station, you can get a fine. Yeah. If, if like, it just says it, then you're fine. Yeah. I mean, even for people um, like that have the car that just don't plug it in. Oh, so oh. you can get a fine if you don't plug it you in. Just leave it there all the time. Oh, well, that kind of makes sense. We can sense. get towed. You get, well, that uh, makes sense. You know, that other people can't use it. Bit, yeah. I wonder if that's one of those ones that you, the, the, you could be, but nobody's yeah. enforcing that bullshit. Bro, listen. If it says you can get towed, you know this is better than well, I do. Yeah, towed is... Tow companies, that's what they do. They yeah, just no, circle no. around waiting to, to pick people no, up. No, they make deals with those places. And yeah. by the way, putting anything on your license, uh, over your license it's plate... Federal, right? That's is, a, yeah, you're tampering with your license plate is against the law. But it's clear. That. Yeah. You can see through it. Well, you can see it, but that's you're okay, tampering We'll put like a little right now when Andrew... Yeah, you somebody's going to get arrested for that. Doug's so scared right now. Yeah, a little I'm not scared. You guys can do whatever you want. Mind Pump does not encourage you to do any of these things we're talking about right now. right now. He's thinking we're going to get sued. Nah, I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to protect you. Yeah, you know? right, Doug. Shut up. Hey, did I tell you guys about my necklace idea? 
Did I tell you guys? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. going to show up with a necklace with a yeah. lock on it. Yeah. Because so, <laughs> Adam's key. Yeah. And I wasn't going to say anything. Oh. I was going to have a lock. Uh, oh. That'd be cute. My just, heart. Just wait for the audience to pick it out. Like, wait, isn't what's going on here? There's something yeah. special going on. Yeah. Best friends forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know? you have the key to my that lock. That might make me jealous. Did yeah. you guys Did you guys do that? You guys never. Did you guys ever have friend bracelets or anything like that with people? I think I did, actually. Oh, my uh, God. I really? Think, I think when I was a young, really young kid, yeah. You and your buddy? No, I think me and my cousin. I think my, I think oh, my, that's family. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's okay. And it was one of my girl cousins, and she got it for me when I was younger. Uh, okay. That's a little weird. Then, your why? girl cousin? Yeah. How close First or second cousin? Really close. Yeah, I was, oh, really? I was, I was closer like to Like Alabama my... close or like? Yeah. <laughs> no, Second's like okay. Uh, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> First, mm. this is my first cousin. So. <laughs> no, 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 oh, that's not good. None of that going that's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I, you know the ones where the like the hearts like half broken. I think I think she got me one of those when I was. I mean, God, I was like, oh, that's cute. Probably nine years old. Or something. Yeah, that's the cute. hands that like go like this. No, not the right. hands. <laughs> How does that work? Oh, it looks like a heart. Yeah, it's like shh. yeah, it does. We should something get like one, that. Justin. You know, I but it's feet. Yeah, the toes interlock. Going. Yeah, we've t we've talked about doing that. Just so so bad. It'd be the worst. It'd be terrible. Did I tell you? I know I told you guys off air. Did I tell the audience what my my sister in law who did the the, the foot thing on the banana? Did I say you that? Did. Oh, okay. I didn't know if I told the audience. Oh, yeah. She stepped on a banana, She's made money, cashing on, on in. Fans yeah, only or yeah. I know. I think someone should look into that, Andrew. Maybe look into something like that. We could do on the on the side. Mm -hmm. Have Andrew yeah, step yeah. on. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Just, just have. I bet he's got good feet. I can find the talent. Toe, yeah, yeah. Toes and hose. Yeah, 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 you find yeah. the talent. Yeah. Yeah. You, you build the page. Yeah. Yeah. What would you walk on, Andrew? <laughs> Broken glass. Oh, 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 actually, that would make money. Oh, I'd be interested in that. I'm sure. Anyway, yeah. all right, let's get back to fitness here, real quick. <laughs> you know what's in, you know what's funny that we haven't talked about in a little while is that you know we our programs go through. Most, most if not all, I think all of our programs have phases, and one of the ways that the phases changes, because there's a lot of ways, but one of them is rep ranges, and we've talked about this before. Like There's value in low reps and moderate reps and higher reps, and all of them build muscle, all of them improve your physique, but switching through them is better than just sticking to one. However, I will say this, and I've seen this with clients, and I've definitely seen this with myself. There's a rep range that you tend to just do the best with. There's that individual variance of rep ranges, and it always blows me away. I have not trained in a low rep range for probably three months because I was getting some aches and pains. So I was just doing like 12 to 15 reps. Um, and I switched to low reps. And man, it's like there is nothing that gets my body to respond like low reps. Wow. Like I'm talking three reps for it, nothing. Yeah. You know, do you guys have, I, you're like me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I have the same kind of experience. I think it's because. I wonder if it's when you're, you know, sort of in that like developmental period where you're you're exposed to, to weight training and then oh, like you know like you cause you, kind of permanent yeah it's almost like a permanent sort of um, hyper responsive adaptation adaptation like it, I don't know that's because like you prime your body to be yeah good at I that. would just do compound lifts that's what I did in the very beginning like it was the formative interesting for me. I don't interesting. know if that's should, the case you should do one of those DNA tests maybe that's what yeah, it's right. stupid. <laughs> Waste of time. Did you, what's your rep range? <laughs> that prove you I'm reptilian on some level. You know what? I, Are uh, you an 8 to 12? You know, I actually think that uh, I have seen equal, uh, like, man, I w it wasn't until you guys, um, when we started hanging out, I never trained less than five yeah. or six even. Like, I was like I, did, I never trained five by five. I never trained three, you know, the three rep or three uh, reps of anything or even singles. Like, um and boy I, I mean, my body responded when i did that now it, i wonder if that's just because you never did so that's why that's what i'm getting at is that so i don't know if it, it that because i also get great results training 10 to 15 reps yeah. too so i you know your when, performance in the gym is pretty balanced i would say you know what i'm as, saying as far as I, yeah i think like uh, justin and i i'd like to think that i'm seem to do really I'm well the most in the diverse lower. i think i'm the most diverse yeah. i think you guys have like justin is like the functional mobility guy like that's yeah. like but what i mean he has to work really hard to make himself do bodybuilding fucker. stuff that's just because he hates it though. and you're like mr yeah. grinding strength yeah. lift everything all super heavy i think i float around more than you guys well what do. i mean by that is just from a strength perspective not necessarily what we enjoy and stuff oh. is uh like justin and i do very well with the lower rep stuff his his is probably more power mine would be more grinding yeah. but still in that low rep stuff like like when you do those one rep max calculators with me, they're always off mm -hmm. because my one rep max does not match what I can only do for 10 at all. I could just do way more for lower reps. 
I've seen you work out, Adam, and you seem to be pretty yeah, balanced. Gassed out, dude. You seem pretty balanced. Yeah. Well, I actually was going to say to you guys, maybe what, why that it part of why you feel that way is because you haven't trained long enough, consistently enough in just the you know bodybuilder 10, 10, 15 superset yeah. that you never allowed your strength to get caught up to that. Like I can move. Like there's not a huge discrepancy between my one rep and then what I can do five, six, eight, ten times. So to your point, yeah. like I'm not that. I mean, I'm. Obviously, I'm a lot stronger on a PR versus what I'm doing 12 or 15 reps, but not it's not as huge as you guys. Well, so I've done long bouts in those in those higher rep ranges. I've done long bouts and supersets because I've always liked bodybuilding too. But like the difference between my two rep max and my one rep max doesn't make sense. I could add so much more weight to the bar and do one rep uh, to what I could only do for two reps. It's not like you know typically it's like oh you can only do this for two. Add ten. That's your one rep max. No, no, mine. Yeah, that's me. Mine for a lot of there's lifts. Not, is like there's it not make a any huge sense. discrepancy between even my three to three to five. Like if if I can move it once, I could probably move it three to close to moving it three oh, to five yeah, times, no, or a, a weight that. pretty close to that. That's yeah. why I don't I, I don't have this big jump when I go to. But a it's PR. interesting. It's just something to pay attention to. So yeah. if you've been working out for a long time and you go through our programs, pay attention to the responses your body give, gives you with all the rep ranges and the phases, and then what you do as you individualize is you just stretch out the phases that you respond best to um, whenever you follow our program. So maybe phase three is five weeks instead of three or phase one or whatever. Um, that's just one way to individualize your training for your specific body. You know, I wonder which one though, so that, that's for the pursuit of strength, which is what you're uh, alluding to right now. But I wonder if uh, aesthetically the things that are more challenging and you suck at would provide better would aesthetics. provide better aesthetics. So again, I'm going to tell you this because I'm also equally, I love the muscle. Equally, I like the aesthetics. I blow up with the low reps. The the moderate reps, I get good results, especially if it's novel, but the I'll gain muscle so fast uh, with the lower reps, which typically isn't the case for people. The thing that I noticed that and what really shifted me like into training this way now way more consistently because of you guys is... Uh, my whole life, really, up until the last like ten years, um, I had I felt like I had this look where I get aired up in the gym. Yeah, and then it deflates, and then I deflate yeah. so much I leave, and to the point where I like sometimes would feel even in my mid twenties with that, I was like, God, you can barely tell I really work out enough. Oh, obviously that so there was a might, little dysmorphia there. Yeah, there's a little dysmorphia yeah. and insecurity there. But I notice a huge difference today after running so many like heavy cycles of it sticks around. Yeah, yeah. Like there, I don't have as much of a like I don't I, I don't look that much crazier when I air up. Yeah, you ain't gonna get a crazy pump doing sets of two. Right, yeah. but then when it's you know two days I haven't been in the gym, yeah. I, I I look more muscular. That's a really common anecdote. I wish we had studies to support that. I don't even know what the study would look like, but that's a very old common anecdote among bodybuilders is that low reps makes you look hard and gives you a granite look higher reps gives you more of a round full pumped look to your body yeah to your point about like power i was thinking about that like my best sort of um i feel like my physique or whatever actually like changes the most is when i'm like doing sprints or like with the sled and, and i'm yeah. doing like jump row yep, yep. i'm doing like a very explosive kettlebell work like shit that i'm like accelerating through and and having like you know as much weight as i can add but like that and i and i attribute that probably to all the 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 years of training uh in athletics and how i had to just respond really quickly and then it was a lot of like really abrupt like like fast speed like generate force and then stop yeah yeah i think you guys are both better at that than me than what like the like the one rep max type yeah, of yeah, training yeah. like the ability for you to call upon more and that one rep that's why i think i have that it's not that big of a difference mm -hmm. between one and three or five reps the weight for me is because i'm lifting it the same way yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't oh i, I see don't, what you're saying you get like because of all your sports training like that and because you because love of the, all my the inner head, anger head, yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so what I think is there, that dude. I'm probably technically stronger. You guys are just better at generating <laughs> generating that one rep yeah. max. So that's my my theory. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna stick probably to overall true. more pretty yeah, and, and I want to stick yeah, to that yeah, stronger so and amazing. This is a perfect time to talk about one rep max because we have a guy in our Instagram every week when we post our qua uh, meme. He's asking, what is your one rep oh, max is? He's and always he, asking us that. He's asked that, that multiple times. He uses multiple names. Each of us. 
Uh, yeah, he wants to know what your run, one rep max is. Here's all, all time or like right now? Because Why? All time. Okay, yeah, I right now. I think it's all time, yeah. Okay, yeah Here's right. what you're going to find. Justin and I are going to go back and forth for first place. Adam's always second. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'll go first, third, That's first, true. third. I'm not, I'm You'll not go the, second, second, I'm not, second. I'm not the strong. Just, uh, just you, the you, base off what we're shit on all, yeah, anything I've done. Yeah. So, uh, But no, you're right. I think I'm the middle on everything. I'm not, I'm not the strongest in any one lift. But generally balanced. Yeah, I've, only, I've only squatted 420. That's the most I've ever squatted in my life. I've 420. never twenty. I've never. <laughs> I've never deadlifted more than five fifty. Um, and my best bench press, three. I cannot three forty, three fifteen for sure. I cannot remember if I hit three forty or not. Really? Let's say three fifteen because okay. I can't. Throw remember. in overhead press too while you're at it. I've oh. seen you do. I've seen you do three fifteen on incline. I know. So maybe you got to have at least a three fifty. Maybe bench. it was three seventy five then. It was. I know I've never hit four. It was three seventy five. Okay, maybe it's you, you, or three sixty five. Because you're right. I've, I've done three fifteen on incline. No, 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 you did three plates in a quarter. I remember okay. you said three sixty five. Mm-hmm. Okay, I remember. You oh, is that with three sixty five? That quarter. is what I've done. Yes, that's what I did for a uh, uh, clean, clean and jerk. Oh, that was God. my highest. <laughs> he, 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 Why are you throw in an exercise none of us is talking about? Yeah. I, I do because that's the ones that I care about. <laughs> I did one on. I, I should do curls. I bicep curl. Like bicep. Shut the fuck up. All right, and then overhead press. You know what that is? Because this do all four. Doug said. You know what? I've actually never my life one rep because i've always so been, strict or, or push push come on strict. okay yeah push uh i've oh, never fuck. i've never it's, one it's rep max that 315 okay. fuck you yeah. overhead push press 315 push press 315 you're yeah. a moose that was but that's like college like I'm, th- okay that's so crazy yeah. that's yeah. you can't only bench press 250 that's yeah. so fucking weird dude. i know what a, <laughs> what a fucking disproportionate so weirdo okay. <laughs> He can't even carry his own luggage. Well, That's no. always been my strongest lift, those overhead press. Like, I, yeah, I know you've always been really. It's good it's at that. the. I mean, the bench. I got I got okay. I mean, what it, did you hit? Four hundred five. Four hundred five. Four hundred five. Four hundred five was was the biggest I've ever did with that. And then, um, you know, and squat was was the other one. But deadlift was. was Hold on, shit. what was your squat? Squat. I got up to four fifty five, I believe. Uh, um, I don't know. I got more. I think at four seventy five, I might have hit. I'm you did. I remember sure. you yeah. saying that. I'm like behind you guys on everything. Four seventy five would be the highest I got for that. But deadlift, not. Nah, I'd be like four oh five. Good. Deadlift is fucking good. Weak, I feel better. Yeah, yeah. So weak. Yeah. yeah. Well. All right. All right. You hit us with your with your shit, dude. Okay. So uh, my strongest bench was three sixty five ever. I can't even. I don't even think I do three fifteen now, but I did three sixty five. Deadlift, of course, you're going to be at least the same to me, so there's nothing I'm ahead of. I just know it because it's a quarter. <laughs> it's like, I did 366. Yeah, 365 and a half. 66. And one and a half reps. With those fractional little weights. I know, magnets I three, on there. 365 yeah. bench, overhead press, push press 225, uh, deadlift 605. Um, and what am I missing here? So I bench, overhead press, deadlift, squat, squat. 450. Actually, did 450 recently. It was the most yeah. I ever did. I, I heard rumors you're working on a 700. I want to try and get huh? a 700 pound deadlift by the end of the year, but uh, you know, crazy bastard. There's all kinds of stuff that can get in the way. Mostly injuries. Yeah, so that's we'll see what happens. <laughs> mostly uh, injuries yeah. get in the way. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I I really have never. You guys inspired that for me. I had never trained. I actually used to take a lot of pride in being the guy who like I'd never. Why would I run red yeah. max? Well, I just care I look. Uh. I mean, the truth is, you've looked the strongest. <laughs> 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 so, and that's what you, you care definitely about. have been the biggest out of all I've ever uh, seen, yeah, dude. Yeah. I remember I me and, me and Adam at Starbucks, and I was just trying to like work with him again. And you were like, uh, just started getting into bodybuilding, and your fucking shoulders were uh, like this big, dude. You're like Rich Piana fucking <laughs> shoulders, bro. I was like, whoa, dude, Adam, you're huge. I well, I, when we were doing that, I I totally remember that phase because never had I, and I don't know if if you guys rem- recall all this in your journey but you know we, we we've we've been training lots of people for a long time and we've been obviously reading and studying and we all have a bunch of national certification justin with his degree and for the first time in my life i really felt like i truly applied all my knowledge everything yeah, everything i yeah. had and was disciplined to yeah. like okay what if i took what Just i know obsessive yeah and yeah. was obsessed about it and i remember justin and i would meet probably once a week and I'd go, bro, this is crazy. I'm like, I'm, like, this, I'm feeling out. this. I'm noticing this. I see this. It was just I, like, remember, I, never, I never cared enough to apply it to that level I'll tell of you consistency. An, I'll tell you a memory with you guys. When we very first got that first studio over there in Willow Glen, the tiny little hole. Yeah. And next to the weed. It was like early mind pump. This is before we, and this is like within the first, had to be. When did we get that studio? Month three? Yeah, in month four. So. so this is like the fourth month I've known you guys. We're working together. And we were going for a walk 
down the street to get some lunch or something. And I'd never seen this in real life. Okay. Now remember, Adam is in the middle of bodybuilding. So he's competing. He's a pro. He just got his pro card. He's going to compete in some pro shows. We're walking down the street. I've never seen this happen before in real life. Women across the street, uh, yeah. take your shirt off. Ah! I'm like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, like, this is the weirdest calling. thing. <laughs> like, no shame. Just I was like, like, this a, girl, is... a lady almost like crashed her car. No. Right? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. He's so beautiful. I think there's, there's something, there's something about when you, when you do, when you build a physique to that, that I think that even women thinks it's like, women think it's okay to do that. Like cat yeah. call like that yeah. where guy, guys do that shit all the yeah. time. Yeah. Right. But girls don't really do that. And I never experienced and that. You How many times like... you've been grabbed? Dude? I swear hey, they get like hands hey, in Hey, he acted like and it probably did he acted like it happened all the time he just kept walking i wouldn't say like, a, Those girls are screaming i wouldn't you. say it happened all the time but i experienced <laughs> i did experience that type of stuff when uh when i got to that level it was uh, you could feel it you could feel people i mean when you uh well you're also tall when you're tall like yeah that, well, you, very, you uh, added in tall yeah. and then for the first time in my life i could really say like there was a t period of time where anywhere I went, I was the most, well, <laughs> I was the most jacked dude. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, when you work in gyms and stuff like that, that's not often. There's always a stronger guy, yeah, a bigger guy, a whatever guy. But for a period of time in my life, yeah. like everywhere I you went, You also I got was to at. the limit of, because uh, there's a point where you get too big, where then just people are staring because you look like a grotesque freak, yeah. which all of us I'm sure would enjoy anyway, but yeah. you didn't get past that point. Yeah, I don't point. think I ever got to No, that. you were physique, right? So yeah. you you were, I mean, extremely muscular, but you weren't like pro bodybuilder, like what is that mutant doing over there? Right. So you just got that attention. But I remember that. I remember like them screaming. It was And I'm looking over like, what dude. are they screaming at? And I'm yeah. like, those girls are screaming at Adam? And yeah. then it happened again. Take your shirt off. Like this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Las Vegas, when yeah. I when I went pro with Katrina out there, that was, I think she, she's so cool too. This is just another reason why I love my wife so much, like how she handled that. She's confident. Yeah. Like we are at Wet Republic when um, David Guida is spinning. The place is completely sold out so you're talking about like thousands of people in this place and i had just came the night before i go pro so like so your, I'm peak, in, your peak yeah stage i'm comes, peaked yeah. out at vegas where there's a lot of great physiques and stuff like that and so here i am at this pool party and again i'm the most jacked person in the entire place so like the whole place and i was up in this like vip area and the whole place like was it got to a point where security came up and asked me, you, you have this line of women that want to come up and talk to you. And Katrina was just like, let them come in. <laughs> wow. Them, and they all came in like one. They, like, that's when you're like, I'm going to have, pictures. that's when you're like, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have a baby with this woman. Yeah. Oh dude. I just, I cause love that's a turn on. If, oh, you're, such if you're with a woman that is that confident to where it doesn't phase her because she knows she has you. Yeah. She has you. Oh yeah. She literally has you when she's like that. Cause it just makes you want her more. I know people don't like she or she doesn't like when I tell the original story, but I mean, those are the things for me because we've been in fitness for so long that you, I've, I've met a lot of very insecure people. And so finding a woman that was that confident, that secure, to where it was her who was just like, yeah, bring them all in. She's like holding the camera, you know? Like the <laughs> so girls great. are like, oh, you know, touching my chest Little and all over me and that. And she's yeah. just like, you know, like yeah. I know I know where he's going tonight. Like she had that <laughs> she had that swag about her where she didn't even trip on it. She's and walking just, around with her trophy. Yeah, and you know, and I, <laughs> you know? I think back now and I'm like, dude, what a crazy, like that will forever be remembered as a, such an amazing like just weekend and moment for yeah. me. Like how easily if I was dating someone else in my life, that could have like killed the whole thing. Like imagine right, I had an easily. insecure girl. Yeah. Well, not just man, an insecure, jealous. And, yes. I mean, not just win. an insecure girl, but almost any other, because that's a high level of security. There's security. Right. Yeah, you're right. And then there's like, oh, this is disrespectful. Don't do that with my man, which is very understandable. Right. That's at like a level above security. So I think almost anybody else, it would have ruined the date. Because they would have right. felt so like yeah, and then potentially ruined a really important big day for a moment for me. Yeah, like I look back at that as like a top top yeah. five moment in my life of that achieving that, and and being able to experience yeah. the whole part of feeling amazed. Like I had a similar experience in the reverse. So <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with Jessica, when we first started dating, we went to a party. I think I told this story a long time ago. We're at a party. And uh, this older guy is like kind of talking to Jessica or whatever. And then he comes up to me, he goes, man, you're, he goes, your daughter's gorgeous. Like, she's really pretty. And I'm daughter. like, my daughter. <laughs> and, he's, and I'm like, she's not here. And he's like, your, your daughter. And I'm like, 
You think Jessica's my daughter? <laughs> now, the reason why I had a reverse feeling of it is I kind of felt cool about it. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. She, looks, she's so, she looks that, she's so hot and young, uh, young looking. She looks like she could be my daughter. Cool. Oh, my God. And she's like, that guy, did, he was just trying to tease you. I'm like, I think he literally meant that, honey. I think he really did mean that. Uh, I looked great. that old, but oh, whatever. Uh, whatever. It's good. with me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to change gears here, a little AI talk. I read an interesting article that um, is fascinating because, obviously, we've talked about AI so many times on the show. But AI yeah. has flipped something so hard on its head that I find this so fascinating, so interesting, and a bit ironic. For the longest time, we've been communicated to, or kids have been told, that the jobs you need to get, if you want to be stable, secure, create wealth, or make good money, is white collar. White collar jobs, white collar jobs, work at a desk, work on a computer, mm, I know you're going. program. I'm reading articles now that are literally saying the jobs that will get taken away that'll get replaced first and quickly by AI or all white collar jobs. The yeah. last jobs to be taken over will be the blue collar. That's ones. right. Plumbers, electricians. They're going to be only employed. I've people. been sounding that alarm dude since day one. I mean, I, 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 how weird will that be? And interesting. That the, you know, the people with jobs are going to be plumbers. Well, what that will create too, by the way, is a higher demand there, lower there. Yeah. Increased productivity on the white collar side. So you can less expensive scale grow there. And then the things that, you just can't. That'll drive the price up to yeah. that. Like, could you imagine it, if our society would flip like that? If That's all, such oh, a flip, right? Well, look at. I mean, just look at um, just your general landscape of people. Like, do you think that like most people have skills to fix things or even know how no. to do that? They no. just don't. No. It's not even like, more than ever now. More than ever. Yeah. And it, and it's it again. It's. That's not going away because shit breaks, and we need like physical, um, capable people to come in, and and that's going to be in high demand. And, always. And, and for people wondering why this is the case, to make to have AI be able to do white collar jobs is easier because it's all done um, on a computer. It's all done yeah. internet. Blue collar jobs require a physical robot to be able to go in, maneuver, and, that's, that's and way fix things, out still. which way requires out. far more technology, far more mm. advanced technology. Well, look at where the 3D printing houses are right now and compare it to a custom house right. that the yeah. contractor builds. No, <laughs> I mean, nobody's running to go buy those. Yeah, yet. it is yeah. not even close. It's cool that we have something that yeah, can do that. Hiring a robot electrician would cost you a million dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. Versus an actual human. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so isn't that weird Yeah, and it, wild how it's flipped on its head? It's strange, like, but it's kind of cool, I think. It is kind of cool. I do yeah. think it's kind of cool. It's like almost like it's getting us back to the things that are, are is it like our little ones like my two-year-old is that what i'm gonna tell him to do to oh, be an electrician go, yeah you gotta go do like go, go work with your grandfather have him teach you how to do construction because that's gonna be the job right that's wild yeah I've, I've had my my boys shadowing my dad's been teaching them like woodworking skills and things and yeah i would love that if there's like metal shop there's auto shop there's like things that they can learn and like hands-on kind of learning it's just like one of those things they just don't incorporate that at all in our schools anymore. They've yeah. gotten rid of it, haven't they, in most schools? Yeah, I did it. Like, I, you know, I did all the shops just because I enjoyed it. You know but. what they do is school does not prepare you for life at all anymore. End of story. They used to also teach, did you guys know this? My mom told me this. I didn't know this. When she went to school, they used to teach you how to balance a checkbook, how, what a home mortgage is, what interest rates are. Really? Yes. She learned all that. She learned how to write a check in school. What era? This was in the 70s. Wow. Yeah. I think yeah. it was- There's was it home ec? Took no, it, it wasn't home ec. It was something else. But they taught her that in school. Yeah. Kids now don't know how to do a damn thing did in the you real life. Yeah, like that that school didn't. No. You, you, you don't, you don't remember curriculum. that, do you? Pardon? Do you don't remember anything like that, do you? I don't remember anything like that. Did mm -hmm. you? Do you remember anything that you got from like grade school that was of value to or you? high school? <laughs> 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 not a lot, really. Yeah. I'm no not, seriously. Not, nothing like, practical. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like really think back. Yeah, but you had music. We did have music and art and PE. And PE. Yeah. So those three are gone. You know, you know, you know, you know how many yeah. elementary schools now or junior highs? PE it's all extracurricular, if you like, or you know, you you have to find those yes. clubs and you have to like. Pay It'd be a shame extra. to have creative, hel uh, creative, healthy people. You know. Yeah, God, I know. Isn't that so, crazy? Yeah, so. we got rid of those things, and they're so important. So anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see. I, I did, I've been uh, along the lines of education. Um, you know, Jessica and I are pretty set that we're going to educate the younger ones through homeschooling, which basically means just. I can't wait to hear that process. We're going to facilitate it, right? Is yeah, what it yeah. is. I was reading some statistics on it and um, talking to people. And I have friends that do this and very successful with it. And one of my friends is like, he goes, dude, he goes, my kids ace all the standard tests. And we do approximately one to two hours of schooling a day. He goes, I don't know what they're doing in these schools. 
He goes, but they literally, the schooling part is like one to two hours a day and they'll ace all the standard tests, no problem. Uh. Everything else they do is like real hands-on, like going out, playing, building, taking them to places, that kind of stuff, wow. right? Museums, that kind of stuff. You know that That's article stuff. I brought up the other day about the average time that dad spends FaceTime yeah. with the kid? That was It was actually like a pro homeschooling uh, oh. uh, article. It was talking about that that's one of the greatest values of you know these parents that are homeschooling their kids is it just it forces that face to face time of like teaching and educating going back and forth and having dialogue with your with your child like and just the value of I that. want to give you another example so one of the things that parents uh who think about this are like how am I going to do that is they're like how am I going to do, like like cuz one of the tenets of homeschooling is that you follow the child right cuz a child that's passionate about something will learn so much just because they're into it. And we all know this as kids. Mm -hmm. Like you have your kid that struggles in school, but then they can name every Pokemon or they can tell you every Lego because they're into it, right? Yeah. So th that's one of the things you do is you, and so parents are like, well, how do I get them to learn math if they hate math? They have to learn math. Or how do I get them to learn to write because they hate to write? I'll give you guys an example. So I had a friend whose kid, they did this and you explore and they just, all of a sudden they just had this pat for a second, right? It wasn't forever, but for a couple of years, just loved cooking, loved cooking. Well, how'd they learn math through measurements with cooking fractions with cooking? How did they learn how to write? They started writing recipes and blogs around cooking because they were into it. They learned all the skills, but based through Dude, or, or filtered through this thing they were passionate now about. Now wrap your brain around what happens when AI gets involved in that, how be much better that's going to be. Imagine this. So to your point you're making right yeah. now. So like my son comes home right now. And hey, can you teach my kid this? Well, or like this. So he had a, you know, this little worksheet and it's like, you know, he's at that, they, they're trying to get him to even learn addition right now, which is crazy, right? At three years old. And it's like, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be like four apples, a uh, visual, and then and then it'll say four underneath it. And mm -hmm. then it'll be plus one apple. Like he's at the point where he's just adding one more to figure out what the next number yeah, is, yeah. right? But imagine if I could input into AI, like, uh, make this Angry Birds. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, he knows all the characters from Angry Birds. And so if it's like four Angry Birds plus one one more, yeah. you know, red or whatever. That yeah, is. we need five Angry Birds to break this building. I could just, yeah. yes. I could oh, just yeah. see, like, his, his, he would be even more of course. Into, into it because of that. And so imagine tools well, like that that you could do. Wasn't that sort of Elon Musk was kind of bringing that up in terms of, like, uh, creating more of a gamified, like, video game experience of education? Like yeah. how effective that was. Yep. Like I remember him talking about that and I was like, yeah, it just, that takes a lot of creativity and a lot of thought to be able to do that. So the AI would definitely well, accelerate I, that. You know, and the reason why this conversation is coming up is I, I showed Jessica that clip that I showed you guys. I don't know who the woman was. I'd love to find this talk, but she talks about how the, the traditional education system is so damaging to so many kids. And she essentially said something like this. We artificially segregate our children into same age groups. The reason why it's artificial is that never happens in the real world where right. kids are only around <clears throat> right, their age. own peers. Yeah. You force them to be sedentary all day long. So sit still indoors all day long. Kids naturally would never do that, but this yeah. is what we force them to do. Yep. Then we teach them through artificial uh, textbooks, essentially. Here's what you're learning. Here's what we're going to read in a textbook versus contextualized in the real world, which is how they would normally learn. Yeah. And so she said, it's no wonder that there's a significant percentage of children that have to be drugged in order to be able to follow the system and why there's so many children that feel like they're failures. Yeah. And and the reason why this resonates with me so strongly is I, you guys know me, I love learning. I lo it's one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to do. I love learning. Hated school. Yeah. I'm in the place where you're supposed to learn and I hated it because yeah, it I didn't was, even realize how much I loved learning until I was out. How sad! Yeah, yeah. that's uh, how I felt too. I didn't think I didn't think I liked like really truly. because you didn't like school. Yeah, because I didn't like school. And then when I found things I was, was passionate about, I, I quickly realized it's so funny though because when I like, look back, I remember my parents uh, like they used to use me like a little party trick when their friends were over. They would like. And I would, God, I had to be, let's see here, I'm in that house, uh, under fourth grade. So I had to be like third grader with that. Right. And they would have me come in. At this point in my life, I'm hardcore into like collecting baseball cards and I love sports oh, already. Cool. And they would have, like, like, watch watch, watch Adam do this. And they would quiz me on like teams, players, the stats, all this stuff like that. And I'd be able to like rattle all oh, off. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's because I spent hours and hours and hours in my you bedroom passionate. looking at the baseball cards and reading their stats and how many years they played and what their batting average was and how many home runs they hit and RBIs and like all these things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, like obviously I had a passion to learn, study, read something like that. It's just that it was baseball. So I didn't- Imagine if it was fostered. Right. Like uh -huh. maybe if we, 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 we use that as a way of teaching me and educating me other things, it's like, boy, that would have been- 
probably would have been a smart kid. All right, I'm going to take another left here. So did you? Do, so I want you guys to guess the top two things that people, both men and women, use uh, to judge attractiveness or to that or that they they'll look at and observe that will determine someone's attractiveness. Two Symm physical things: symmetry. Okay, so symmetry is. I'm oh, sorry, top three things. Symmetry is up there. Yes, symmetry is one of them. Okay. Oh, now, so, like, so what are two the other two? So symmetry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got to be a physical, like healthy hygiene. Yeah, like more a, specific. Okay, okay um, so like, uh, like, um, well, I mean, good how skin, muscular skin is the other one. Uh, oh, okay, okay, skin is the other one. Not and muscular. Then, no, that's up there, but it's not one of these top ones. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got two right now. So we, the, uh, so symmetry, because uh, that just shows good DNA health. Right. Skin, because your skin will showing your teeth. Whether or not your teeth. Oh, teeth. Mm -hmm. Good call. Yeah. Good call. Te hair, uh, skin. Uh, I had to get <laughs> skin and teeth. <laughs> but skin, <laughs> and this is for both men and women. Having good skin. Uh, demonstrates good health, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's above all the other stuff yeah, that we think about. Those are all measures of health. Like, it's all yeah. it's above all the other things that we th that we talk about when it comes to attractiveness, yeah. which leads me to our partner Caldera. I get compliments. Great partner. I get compliments skin. on that because of that. Your skin. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I just did my. I had the day in the life yesterday, right? I know this is different a day air day whatever that, but for when this happened when we recorded, I did it yesterday, and uh, was sharing that like I religiously use that that face cream because i see i can see such a difference there's not a lot of things that you can do you know or buy yeah or, you know or, or take or it's just like you see in profound yeah profound difference like right away like it's a profound difference mm -hmm. on how much it makes my my skin look better healthier younger it looks like it takes years off yeah. my life same so, here yeah I'm, I'm sold which is funny because we did not want to never thought i'd do that we never that. thought that would be a part but i mean sold me totally so. we got a shout out justin does Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I have a interesting shout out. This is one just because it's a fun one, right? So this is a, a basically it's a, a group of guys that are in this band and they play songs like they just do instrumentals for a lot of like hit like rap songs and and like gangster rap songs and like Notorious B.I.G. and like you got like Snoop and all these like so anything you'd heard that was like normally synthesized like they'll play on guitar drums oh, cool. and like a keyboard and like oh, they, they just groove these so every day I just like a, a new one pops up and it's like totally like you know, just a cool jam to listen to. So uh, what, I what's put the name? That out there. Where do they go? So, o m a dot u k. O m a dot u k. All right, cool. Hey, real quick, you heard us talking about peptides. One in particular was BPC one five seven, but there's a lot of peptides out there, and they're pretty remarkable. They've been shown to burn body fat, help improve recovery, healing, build muscle, stimulate growth hormone output. Um, this stuff is legit. It's real. But you want to go through a doctor and you want to go through a pharmacy. The stuff that's online, uh, who knows what's in it? It's all research chemicals. No joke. That's how they're selling it. So we work with a group uh, at mphormones.com. Go there, fill out the questionnaire, meet with an expert and a professional, and get actual doctor-prescribed, pharmaceutically-made peptides. Again, it's mphormones.com. All right, back to the show. First question is from Emma Rosa B. How can I get a solid core? No banging abs, but a really strong engaged core. How do you train to naturally engage them in normal day-to-day -day activities to prevent injury? Oh, heavy carries. Yeah. Nothing will give you a core that could brace like heavy carries. Now, of course, you have the traditional, you know, like planks and stuff like that, but you want to talk about real world I stability? Think, I don't think Eugene Tao would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him talk about that. That's a good example of like the bodybuilder uh, like slant, right? You were a bodybuilder, so everything's going to be kind of slanted in that direction. Yeah. But anyway, um, heavy carries. Nothing's going to do that to your core like heavy carries. And don't wear a weight belt because a weight belt changes muscle recruitment patterns. But when you're doing heavy overhead carries or rack carries or farmer walks or suitcase carries, like your core has to engage through locomotion, right? Through walking. And so you learn to brace and stabilize your core and it strengthens in that position. It really, really does a good job on protecting the spine. So, I, I mean, I can't think of anything. I, lo I love uh, yeah. rotational and anti-rotational right. stuff too. So That's like- the direction I was going to go, yeah. Um, like heavy dumbbell rows and, you know, training them in, in one phase with putting emphasis on keeping your- hips and spine and everything completely straight and rigid mm. while you're in that place. So you get kind of the anti-rotational benefits from it. And then actually training a phase where you incorporate rotation into the row. I think it, there's lots of benefits there 
wood chops, uh, I think, uh, are really good. For it. So I, I, the what you said, I think, for like a solid, stable, like I think that I agree with that for sure. But then definitely having some sort of a rotational, anti-rotational component because that's normally when you see injury is when somebody moves in that manner and they just haven't trained. Yeah, yeah. and also, too, being able to control. So if you, if you work through the strength part of it and you work your way more towards power, like so with core, being able to accelerate – uh, and it, with rotation and be able to uh, control that as well and decelerate. Uh, so, for instance, like you're throwing a medicine ball and you're tossing it, yeah. um, you know, laterally uh, to to be able to generate that kind of force to explosively throw something with weight, uh, but then also be able to control your body back and, and ground yourself. Um, so those are both those elements you're you're talking about in terms of rotational ability, anti-rotational ability. Um, is going to protect your spine on any of those. Because if you think of when most people get some kind of injury, it's a very like quick explosive movement that they haven't prepped their body for and, and their body overreacts or underreacts. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good point. But notice we picked exercises that are uh, uh, non-traditional too, right? Yeah, so it's not, we didn't say crunches. Like right, obviously like your your standard sit-ups and things like that add value, right? They're, I mean, they'll not, develop, they'll muscularly develop. Yeah, yeah. But, but that I feel like is more the aesthetic angle, right? Versus having a really solid functional core. Like your ability to carry something over your head really heavy and mm -hmm. walk and keep stable in spine or that's throw paramount. a ball explosively to the, the left or the right is like that it, that you want to have a really strong core that is a really strong core is the ability to do that really well you can have beautiful looking abs from doing crunches all day long and dieting but if you it could you could fold like a lawn chair as soon as you put something over your head so that that yeah. is a more functional strong core yeah and and um you know when i used to do this with clients you want to talk about ways of uh preventing back injury or even alleviating back pain one thing too with the heavy carries is the goal is to walk, you, you want to walk you with crazy stability. Yeah. So you don't want sway or, so that's too heavy. You should be able to walk real steady, real controlled, heel toe, heel toe, and have a really strong brace core because what we're trying to train is stability, not how much weight I can hold. If you have the luxury to do this, I love to do that barefoot. I like to take yeah. my shoes off yeah, and walk out real slow. And like you said, like I'm feeling every step in the ground. For me, I have a slight <laughs> anterior pelvic tilt, so my ass sticks up and out a little bit. So I'm actually kind of tucking. Oh, yeah. I'm tucking my tailbone and engaging my core while I have it overhead. And I'm thinking about every step as I walk across the grass really slow. And so I have to kind of lighten the load. Even though I can do heavier weight over my head, the point you're making is something that uh, you have to think about. That's the, Or else mm. it defeats the purpose mm -hmm. if you just kind of put whatever you can handle. Next question is from V Cardamone one. What are the best exercises to work the lower lats? Okay. So the lats are interesting because the attachments of the lats do run kind of along the sides there of the, of the back. So you can emphasize a little more on the lower versus the upper, although this is a bit of splitting hairs. So what I'm going to say is really about just targeting the lats more than other back uh, muscles and that would be a pull up or a pull down. Nothing that is a very direct lat exercise. Now, lower lats, if we're trying to target them more, and again, this is splitting hair, so I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference, but you wanna be able to feel the stretch in the lower lats. So a closer grip with a stretch at the top uh, would, would be able to do that. So, like a close grip pull down or a close grip pull up uh, will give you that stretch at the top. And again, it's a direct lat exercise, whereas a row, Rows are great general back exercises, but you're also going to engage a lot of rhomboids, mid trapezius, and other muscles of the back. But if it's just like pure lats, like those pull down and pull up movements, like you can't beat those. So I'm going to give a non traditional uh, movement because I do think that those are the like your go to. Like you, if you were to do the big rocks, like make sure you're checking that. You got to be doing a, a pull up. You got to be doing some sort of a lat pull down, wide and narrow. To me, that's like the staple. I also think that most people kind of know that. One of the biggest gains I saw on my lats when I was competing was when I started to snatch grip deadlift. Snatch grip deadlift. Just, the, just needing to stabilize. Yeah, I uh, think just because you, it's because it creates almost like this heavy isometric contraction for the lats yeah. in order to stabilize, hold, stabilize and hold that position like that, yeah. and to load. I mean, I could do that. I could do that with over 315 pounds. There mm -hmm. is no lat pull down, no pull, no, nothing I'm doing yeah. that is over 315 pounds. And so, and it, I didn't do it with that intent. Like I didn't go into snatch grip deadlift. Like, oh, I want to build my lats. Like I was literally just getting good at that. 
and it built my lats. Like because it has to stabilize. If you think about the positioning, right, as you're bending over and standing up, the lats are contracting, and because your arms are wide, they really have to stabilize. And I mean, it's novel. It was such a novel movement yeah. to my body. I had done a million lat pull downs, pull ups. And that was what map strong. Yeah, yeah, map strong. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed something similar. Did with you one. mention heavy pullovers at all? I mean, Ooh, oh, no. that's yeah. actually kind of really that's a direct to, lat exercise. Yeah, and How I, I missed that. I don't one? know about lower or whatever, but like it definitely the stretch of that is like for me is yeah humongous. No, great. I don't know how we missed that. I that's a must also. One of my favorite. There's only there's a few machines that I'll put up there with free weights for me, and oh, one the of them pullover is machine. yeah I love Nautilus machine. pullover machine. I love that machine. All, there's a lot of pullover machines, and I like most of them. <laughs> But the old school Nautilus pullover oh, machine the chain? with the chain. Yeah. I mean, you I, I mean, use that one. Yeah. Oh, that was like, I there's, never felt my a, lats. There's isolated. a blue one at the, the, the golds, which is, I think American barbell. Now that's off of Monterey road. That's the last time I used one. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a great, that's a great machine. That one you'll find like Arthur Jones, uh, you know, having Casey Vider or Mike Menser use, and they used to prescribe it before pull downs with what they would do pre exhaust or whatever. But mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I don't know how we let that yeah, slip heavy all the way to though. Justin and not say that. I think we would all agree. <laughs> well, I, 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 I just, yeah. I don't want to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what though, the, the, all the things we just named right there, you build that into your routine. You're going to hit some lats. Yeah. You're going to build some lats. Next question is from Xamexer. Can you guys please give your opinion on meal prep companies? Do you think they're worth it for someone who's extremely busy? I find myself not really eating much because of work, so I wonder if I should invest in these expensive meal prep companies to maintain a good nutritional intake. They are extremely valuable if you're very busy because now there's a lot of, okay, I have to, I have to preface this. There's a lot of meal prep companies that are all the same. They're not all equal. Yeah. yeah. Who's the one that- Daily sending, Dose. Uh, Daily Dose is the best one I've had so far. They're very health focused, meaning macros are good. Ingredients are good. They're not going to, you know, it's, it's not like eating out, yeah. right? It's almost, it's Gra almost like it's food meat, sourcing. Is, yeah. is a it's really good. Though, yeah. It's really good. Uh, really well sourced. Um, and if you're trying to be fit, healthy, hit macros, also stick to whole natural foods and have convenience, I don't know a better way to do it than a meal prep company. Because otherwise, what will end up happening is either A, you have to prep yourself, B, you're going to have to eat out a lot, yeah. or C, you're going to have to use processed foods. Yeah. And eating out, you don't know what kind of oil they use. They, they're heavy-handed or underhanded with the ingredients. Processed foods, we know why that's not a great idea. And then, of course, if you're busy prepping yourself, it's kind of out of the question. So I am a huge fan of this stuff. The only reason why we are not officially uh, sponsored by a meal prep company is because the it, the um, ad doesn't make sense. The margins was. are not big. The margins are so small that, and our commercials are so expensive that we would have to sell a jillion things of food for it to justify the spend. So the reason why we don't work with a company is purely that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because we're not fans of it or we don't use it. I mean, right now, our friend uh, is sending over, uh, Don Saladino is sending over uh, from his his company, the Daily Dose, as like a just a solid hookup. He's just taking care of us. And, and by the way, us. here's another thing I hate about meal prep companies is I. it's so hard for me to say gluten-free, dairy-free. I said that to him. Everything they've sent me is gluten free, dairy free, everything. So they yeah. have those specifications. I, I think there's uh, so much value in this. Um, it, if you're someone who's disciplined, who will eat the meals and be consistent with it, and you're okay with with like that, like having prepackaged stuff. Like some people are weird about that. Like some people are just like, oh, I have to have fresh made every day type of stuff. And it's but like, see, but this one's fresh. It's not frozen. No, I know. It's but all I mean, like, when it comes to I, what I mean by fresh is like I, freshly make made. it yourself. Yeah, make yeah. it yourself. And so. You know, you have to you have to assess if you're that type of person. If you're willing to follow it, oh my God, it's of of great value. One of the greatest challenge of sticking to a diet is having something prepared That's for you. It. That's why I meal prep personally. It's why on Sundays we tend to do that. I just did a video of me doing that for the next day with Katrina yesterday. Like uh, having uh, what I have learned in my experience in training and dieting myself, uh, even competitively, is that if I don't have something prepared and ready for me. The, the, the likelihood that I'm going to make a good choice is extremely low in comparison to when I have something ready. If I've got something ready, then it's just purely a mental discipline. It's like, oh man, I'm craving those chips or, oh, I really want some fast food or, oh, ice cream sounds so good, but I know I have a meal in there. Then it's literally, I just have to discipline myself to like go over there, heat that meal up. As soon as I start taking bites of it, I'll already forget that, th that thing I'm craving. I won't even worry about it. Yeah. And discipline. if I don't have something ready and I those cravings hit me, 
Oh, way it's harder. Like, it's way harder because then I go, oh, I got to make something and what do we have? Do I have to go to the grocery And then you store? end up like, okay, well, I'll eat out. And then there's a yes. million options. Yes. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of these. Yeah, things. I mean, uh, look, the, the, some of the greatest success I ever had with clients who were busy was through working with these companies. And then they would just have everything set up for them. And then they would do something like, well, Saturday, I like to go out and enjoy myself. So that's the only day I don't do this. But they would have four meals ready to go. You go in your fridge, pull them out. Here's what I'm eating today. Yeah, deal. even if it's just like a, you, the one meal, you know, is the worst, right? Like, like it's a lunch like because it's you, you usually skip it or, yeah. you know, it's one of those things that like it, your whole day can just like easily get away from you. Like at least if you have that one thing that's like controlled, I think it's valuable. But again, no, you're, I do like two prep meals a day. Yeah. There's that's kind of my thing, right? And what eat are you about doing, four, breakfast, lunch, or lunch? And no, snack? the middle ones, right? So breakfast, I'll, I'll make like our eat our uh, meal one. You know, the creatures of habit. <laughs> right. Uh, that'll normally do that for our breakfast. It'll be my my lunch. Or what I don't know if you call it two lunches because I do like two in the middle of the day, right? So the two in the middle of the day, we know I normally do my meal one, or if it's on the weekend, we make breakfast, and then Katrina makes dinner every single night. So it's the two in the middle, in the middle. that make the most sense. Now I, I do want to stress this again: they're not all all these meal prep companies are not all created equal. And well, I'd you shouted out Daily Dose. Daily I, Dose is fine. That's the one. That's yeah. the ninety percent. Are, are just I didn't like. I this do think the first one Doug. I liked. Do you mm -hmm. know if they they do they do something for our audience? Do they get a kick? Do they get a deal? Yes, we do have a link. It's mpdailydose.com, and then there's a code for twenty percent off your first order. It's uh, Mind Pump twenty, so they could use that. Next question is by Health by Nikki J. Are high protein diets actually bad for longevity? Oh, yeah. No, this is so <laughs> terrible. So. So here's where this myth, um, there's, there's, this myth comes from the fact that, um, that who protein- was it that did, Who was it that did the, these, these studies that said this first? It doesn't. Who got popular? It, um, okay, so there's studies that show if you go calorie restricted for a long time, you expand, you extend longevity. Okay. that's By the way, there's quality of life and then there's longevity. Yeah. Uh, could, will you live longer kind of starving yourself your whole life versus fueling yourself? Probably. Um, I'm not saying overeating it. I'm just saying fueling yourself. Probably. Are you going to have like the same quality of life? No. Like, I don't know if you want to feel weak and tired all the time. So, you know, maybe, um, and then quality of life contributes to longevity as well. So maybe not, maybe not even that, but this comes from P from studies that show that protein activates mTOR mammalian target rapamycin and mTOR signals muscle growth. mTOR also causes cancer cells to grow. So people go, we need to keep mTOR down so that we can reduce cancer. No. There is a very big difference between having cancer and what you need to do versus not having cancer and what you need to do. You know, you know what fuels cancer? Fats, carbs, proteins, amino acids, like food, like almost anything that you fuel cells fuels cancer. So in a pro-cancer environment, you don't want to stimulate mTOR. When you don't have cancer, totally fine. Um, and mTOR is a good thing. It, it, it builds muscle, it enhances recovery, that kind of stuff. Protein is great for longevity. Protein. I would make the, I would make the argument that a high protein diet is one of the best things you can do for longevity because if you tease out the mm -hmm. what the, those studies try and show with the mTOR, I would say that most people that run a high protein diet also eat a lower calorie diet, and those people would uh, eat less, stay lower body fat percentage. The lower body fat yeah. percentage is going to play a better. Not to mention muscle preserving. Uh, I right. mean, in terms of longevity and having strength and being able bodied, I feel like there's a whole nother sort of argument in that direction of like, so you're talking about quality of life, but it's like what we're finding out more about how protective muscle is and compared to like, you know, other methods for staving off diseases and, and potential internal a, problems. A top five reason for dying when you get older is you fall down. Yeah. You break that, your hip and then it's like a death Because you're weak because you don't have muscle and your bones are weak uh, as a result. Now, a high protein diet that's also super high calorie and full I'm of garbage. I'm so glad you said that because I know somebody that's listening to what I just said is going to be like, There's, I've seen studies that say the no. opposite of that. But no. those are the studies that show people that eat high protein with processed food. So eating, you know, or, someone, just, or just too many calories. Yeah, somebody eats 5,000 yeah. calories a day and 4,000 of it comes from McDonald's and, and Jack in the Box and, and, all, and, they, and they hit high protein. Shit. But they also eat tons of saturated yeah. fat, tons of extra calories. And so in the context of that, what I my statement is not true. If you eat a high protein diet and it's based on whole foods, you will live longer. Yeah. If you compare healthy diets uh, that are appropriate calories and you take a bunch of identical people with identical lifestyle, some of the diets are high protein. Some of the diets are moderate protein. Some of the diets are low protein. You'll find that the high protein diets are probably better 
than the other ones, or at least as good as the moderate ones in terms of longevity. Now, in terms of strength, muscle, quality of life, high protein is superior. So don't be worried about this. Now, there's other people say, oh, what about your kidneys? Um, unless you have kidney disease, in which case your nephrologist will tell you what to do, and sometimes they actually tell you to increase your protein, um, you're fine. Your kidneys are totally fine. They process protein, no problem. And protein was uh, what we probably ate a lot of at times as hunter-gatherers because the ultimate food that you were after was animal. It just was the most nutrient dense. It made you survive. Um, what's that, what's that, that famous poster or whatever? There's a, there's a native American word for, for vegan, bad hunter. Like you're, 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 <laughs> you're, you know, we, we survived by eating a lot of protein, um, animal protein. So no, this, this is not bad for longevity. Look, if you like mind pump, if you want more workouts from us and you don't want to buy a maps program, go to Instagram, mind pump media, subscribe for under $5 a month, get a brand new workout every single day. Mind pump media on Instagram. <laughs>